Hey everyone, I am back today with a complete guide on foliage. If you are new to Unreal Engine 5 or if you are coming over from Unity, you are at the right place to get started with foliage. And even if you are an advanced user already, you might learn a few techniques to optimize your foliage even further. It took me a lot of time to research and experiment with every technique I could find and I tried to keep it as short as possible. So please follow along and stick to the end so you don't miss an important tip. For this project, I am going to start with a landscape that I made with M4 Maker, an advanced auto landscape material plugin. I use this because I want to show you some features and optimizations later on that this plugin uses, but you can apply everything I show in this guide in your own project for free. But more on that later. So you are in your blank project with default settings, you have a landscape or a plane you want to scatter foliage on. The first thing you might do is go to Quixel Bridge to find some assets, so let's do that. In the sidebar, look for 3D plans, then make your selection. Choose the quality, then download and add to the project. In the content browser, you will now find the Megascans folder with your assets. You have static meshes, textures, material instances, and a foliage folder where you will find what appears to be the same assets again. I found it quite confusing when I started learning Unreal Engine because nobody talks about this. Basically, the static meshes in the root folder are the real meshes with polygons and materials that you expect from a mesh. When you scatter them in your scene, you actually scatter instances of them or copies that are linked to the meshes. This is what we find in the foliage folder, the foliage instance component. So when you drop your static meshes in the foliage tool like that, you actually see the settings of the components in the foliage folder. You can swap the static mesh for a different one if you want, and now you see the new mesh shown in the foliage folder. Now that that's explained, simply drag and drop your meshes in the foliage tool and start painting. First thing that seems problematic is a very aggressive LOD system by default. The transitions are very noticeable and happen too close to the player in my opinion. How you deal with that will depend on the type of project you are working on, like a game or a cinematic or a movie. One way we can go around that is to enable Nanite on the grass. Instead of using regular LODs, Nanite basically removes or adds triangles dynamically, which is amazing for very dense and detailed assets. It's also very easy to set up. To enable Nanite, simply select all your meshes and enable it. Now before doing anything else, go to Asset Actions, then Edit Selection in Property Matrix. Turn on Preserve Area in the Nanite settings. This setting is important for foliage to keep details. To make sure Nanite is working, change your view mode to a Nanite Visualization View Mode. In terms of performance, it will depend on your scene and how many of these meshes you will display at the same time. But overall, Nanite is not really well made for tiny assets like grass and you will most likely lose performance. If you are making games, you should keep Nanite for large meshes. I personally make short films in Unreal Engine, so I don't really care about performance as long as it looks good and the editor isn't crashing. For this type of project, Nanite is great because you don't have to spend time on refining LOD transitions and using only LOD0 will have terrible performance, much worse than Nanite anyway. If you are a game dev, however, you will need to adjust the LODs manually to get the performance and look balance that you need. But first of all, you can get an insane boost of performance by just switching the assets. Quixel Megascan's assets are incredibly detailed, but also incredibly heavy. For example, these grass meshes have around 16,000 triangles at LOD0, which is insane for a tiny grass asset. You can make assets yourself, or find game-ready assets on the marketplace that will usually have a few hundred triangles, or even less if you go for a stylized look. Whatever you choose, you will still have to adjust LODs, so let's do that. I didn't find a built-in way to bulk edit the LOD settings, but there may be plugins for that. If you know a better way to do this, please share your method in the comments as it is quite tedious. Go into the static mesh details and find the custom checkbox. This allows you to adjust screen size for each LOD of your mesh, meaning how small the mesh should be on the screen before switching to this LOD. 
you will need to experiment with different values to see what works in your case. Know that you can set up the screen sizes differently for other platforms by clicking on the plus icon. As you can imagine, this will take a ton of time to do properly, but is the only real way to get the perfect balance between looks and performance for your needs. You could use the auto-compute LOD distances feature, but honestly I didn't notice any improvement by turning it on. Actually I had worse performance, so feel free to experiment with it, but to me it's not really a good solution for now. Another important aspect when talking about performance is culling. Culling is done to completely remove assets past a certain point in distance. This is quite important and if done well, you won't even notice it in game. You will find curl distance in the eastern in the east inst <laughs> You will find curl distance in the instance settings. Experiment with the max distance value and try to find a reasonable value that balances well with your LODs and your terrain. For instance, if you have a lot of hills, it is easier to hide the curl distance than in a very large flat area. Okay, let's talk about textures now. Depending on your assets, you may have very big textures. Megascan's assets usually come at 4K or 8K resolutions, which is cool to have, but way overkill for most of them. Again, it will depend on your needs, but you should pay attention to your texture resolutions anyway. To edit your textures, once again go to Asset Actions, Edit Selection in Property Matrix. Under Compression, you will find Maximum Texture Size. This asset has 4K textures, I'm going to use 1K instead. Always keep your sizes to a power of 2, so in this case, 1024. As you can see, we can't really tell the difference, but we just save some memory and performance. I could go even lower on the textures, or just on the normal map for instance, but you get the idea. If you decided to go with Nanite however, you may want to use virtual textures as it is recommended by Epic. Virtual textures have the same principle and goal than Nanite, which is to dynamically adjust texture size in relation to the camera distance. You first need to enable virtual texture support in the project settings, then restart the engine. Select your textures and click the handy Convert to virtual texture at the top. Actually, don't do that, as it will make a complete mess in the files and folders by duplicating stuff around. Let's do it manually instead, as usual in the property matrix. Turn on virtual texture streaming. Now go to the master material and change the sampler types to virtual. If you don't see the option, it means that the placeholder texture is not virtual, so you can turn them into virtual textures as well. Okay, if you made it this far, I have a good performance tip for you. If you're using Unreal Engine 5.3 and virtual shadow maps, which you probably should use at this point, you have access to a new setting that can boost your performance in just a few seconds. Go to your foliage instances settings and scroll to shadow cache in validation behavior. By default, it's set to auto, set it to rigid instead. You should see an instant improvement in FPS. If you want more information on this one, I'll put a link to Cyber.Studio's video in the description. He also has a DIY solution for you if you are not on 5.3 yet. We are getting close to the end of this guide now, but I still have a few important things I want to show you. Until this point, we try to optimize our assets when using the foliage mode, but the most obvious trick would be to use less assets in the first place. Having good fundamentals can dramatically increase your performance, like avoiding too complex materials, making your assets lighter and bigger so that you need less of them, etc. Having a great landscape material will also help you reduce the number of assets you need. I'm going to show you the example map of the M4 Maker plugin. This is not a sponsorship in any way, I just bought the plugin recently and I was shocked to see how good the map looks and how performant it is. I have an RTX 3080 with a 4K monitor and I get around 100 FPS on this map, which is impressive. If you look closely, you'll see that the map isn't packed with foliage assets, 
they are well spaced but still look great and serve their purpose. The assets are also much lighter than mega scans. So how does this map achieve this result? Well, actually they didn't use foliage mode at all. Instead, they used landscape grass type to scatter the assets procedurally during runtime. For this to work, you need a landscape auto material that will interpret the landscape shapes, hills, mountains, and flatlands to scatter grass for you. This is the most efficient way to scatter grass by far, but for that you need the landscape material. There are many paid ones like the M4 I am using here, that has a ton of features, but you can also make your own for free. I am not going to cover this here as it is a whole other rabbit hole to go down, but you'll find great tutorials on YouTube. I will put a link in the description to the Unreal Sensei video, which is awesome for beginners and even better, you can directly download the landscape material for free without building it from scratch. In the landscape grass types, you will basically find the same scattering settings as in foliage mode, it's just a matter of using them with your landscape material. An important note though, uh, this is not compatible with collisions. This is great for grass, but for trees or anything that needs collision, you can use foliage mode or this other procedural tool that I'm going to show you now. But first, go to the editor preferences and search for foliage, then enable procedural foliage. You can now create procedural foliage spawners. Add your trees inside. And by the way, you won't find trees in Quixel Bridge, but you can import free Megascan packs from the marketplace. Now simply drag and drop the spawner into the scene, resize it, and hit Resimulate. To get more control on the scattering, you will find the procedural foliage blocking volume in the Place Actors panel. Once again, resize it and intersect it with your spawner and hit Resimulate. Well, that's almost it for this guide. Thank you for sticking to the end, but I have one last tip to give you if you want to use ray tracing and nanite. If you see weird shadows on your meshes, go to the nanite settings, then turn the relative error for the fallback to zero. And that's really the end this time. I hope this was helpful to you. As you can imagine, it took me a long time to research, write and make, so I would appreciate if you could give it a like so that it reaches more people. Feel free to add more helpful resources, links and techniques for others to learn from. I may have missed a few things and it could help me as well. Thanks for your time and see you soon. Bye.